For the most of us human beings, we torture, kill and eat other animals for foods, and we don't feel bad about it. Because certain animals like fish are just food. Or, at least, most of us think that way. We don't think of them as a sentient or intellectual being. But, what if we were wrong? What if fish actually can think and feel things, just like you? Swimming to Sea, a Korean animation, explores this concept from the eyes of sentient and intellectual fish. The story begins at a Korean fisherman's village. Fishermen catch fish and deliver them to seafood restaurants. Among many other fishes, a young mackerel get caught in the net and is brought to the seafood restaurant into an aquarium. One flounder was eaten alive in the restaurant. The fish is cut into pieces, but still pretty much alive. A boy looks at the clownfish in an aquarium and asks his mom what would happen to the clownfish if more fish are added. His mom feeds him dinner without answering his questions. The restaurant owner then decides to move the newly catch mackerel into the aquarium which has fewer fish. More customers drive up to the restaurant to order food home. The owner of the restaurant told the new customers that all of his fish was freshly caught from the ocean this morning. The newly caught mackerel swim frantically in his aquarium. It thinks it can break out of the aquarium wall by ramming into the wall with all its might. However, the rest of the fish in the aquarium knew better and pretend to be dead. So they won't be served to someone. As customers walk into the restaurant, a green fish named Spotty gleefully announced to other fish in the aquarium that the danger has passed. Unfortunately, as soon as the other fish begin to swim, the restaurant owner came back to aquarium to catch the unlucky fish butchered, and gutted it alive. At night, restaurant closes. The mackerel continue to ram into the wall to break free. Spotty tries to explain to the mackerel that it is impossible to break free from aquarium invisible wall. But, the mackerel does not listen. The rest of the fish in the aquarium ridiculed the mackerel's futile effort. All the fish in the aquarium used to pick on spotty green fish as the dumbest fish in there. Often they provoke him by biting off part of his tail. But, now they turn their target to the mackerel. Suddenly, all the fish are called to line up. From under the lattice at the bottom of the aquarium, a mysterious fish emerges. The rest of the fish revere him with much respect and call him the boss. When the boss fails to reason with the mackerel to stop the ramping, he takes off and knocks out the mackerel hard. Before the mackerel loses complete consciousness, the mackerel hears the boss' final words. Play dead when people look at you. While the mackerel dozes off, she dreams about floating freely in the ocean. The mackerel hopes that this was all just a nightmare that will go away she woke up. Humans are terrible demons who caught fish in invisible cage and brutally hurt them. Her friends and brethren can be so cruelly killed. The next day, the mackerel gains consciousness and once again faces the horrifying reality. Almost as soon as the mackerel woke up, a half-dead fish was thrown into the aquarium to feed other fish in the aquarium. The half-dead fish begs not to be eaten, but the eel pushes it under the hinge where the boss was hiding during the day. After a few moments, the half-dead fish is pushed back with gouged eyes. The rest of the fish in the aquarium, with the exception of the mackerel, immediately finish off the now dead fish and torment its body and gusto. The mackerel is in a shocking state. Since she was also thrown into the aquarium, she feels sympathy for the dead fish. The lid is now open. The mackerel sees an opportunity. So she jumps out of the aquarium. She flops to the ground and struggles to get to the ocean. But the sea is too far. The mackerel stops halfway and faints without water. At that moment, the restaurant worker sees the mackerel. He picks it up and launches it back into the aquarium. There is a sacred ritual at night in this aquarium. Every night, the boss flounder will give a riddle about life in the ocean. The one who solves the riddle will earn the right to bite off a piece of the loser's tail. But, this game is fixed. The loser is always going to be spotty green fish. The boss told the other fish that he came from the ocean. But, the truth is that he was raised on the farm, just like the rest of the fish in the aquarium. Tonight, the boss asks how many limbs a starfish has. 
the mackerel has seen starfish many times. So she confidently says five. Other fish say 50 limbs, and Spotty says 51. The boss then says the correct answer is 50. To the mackerel's surprise, she asks if anyone has actually seen the starfish in real life. Every fish confirms that they have seen it. The boss then says that the mackerel lost. So, all the fish pounce on her and try to bite off a piece of her tail. But, fortunately, the mackerel managed to escape. The next day, the eel tries to attack the mackerel again. But, Spotty intervenes. The friendship between Spotty and the mackerel develops. Spotty asks the mackerel why she jumped out of the aquarium yesterday. She explains that she wishes to return to the sea where she belongs. The mackerel teach Spotty how to separate the sound of the ocean from other sounds. The boss overhears the conversation. He then reminisced about his past when he used to live in this aquarium with his lover. She was from the ocean and also taught the boss how to listen to the sounds of the ocean. It was not easy for him because he had never experienced anything outside of the aquarium. It was his girlfriend who taught him to pretend to be dead to save himself. Unfortunately, one day she was caught nonetheless. This remains the most painful experience of the old flounder. The mackerel tells Spotty that she can speak the languages of many sea creatures, including king crabs. She also shares her life experience of living in the ocean, which makes Spotty get excited about life outside the aquarium. Fish in the aquarium never think about life outside the aquarium because the boss always tells them that they would never make it in the wild. They would be eaten alive by other predators in the sea. At night, the boss swims out and angrily attacks the mackerel for disobeying and sowing seeds of doubt to the other fish in the aquarium. The fight escalates. Out of anger, the boss slips up and shoots out loud that he is actually a fish farm, not a wild fish from the ocean. After the heated battle, the boss bleeds and hides in his lair. Because the fish are accustomed to the tradition of the nightly riddle, they ask the mackerel to give them one. The mackerel then asks, how do they all get out of the aquarium? Spotty then answers that every being has a soul. If they become souls, then they can break free from the aquarium. The other fish, named Brim, then says they should try to break the invisible wall. Another fish then suggested that they wait for heavy rain. Then, they can swim in the ocean. A sea base then suggests that they should ask king crabs to break the glass with their claws. Fortunately, king crabs live right under the aquarium. Nobody, but Spotty, believes that these ideas can work. The mackerel debunked the greatness of the boss and asked the fish to think with their own heads. But, the fish are not ready to change and angrily attack the mackerel. Brim tries to beat the mackerel to death. But, the boss came out to stop the fight and asked everyone to calm down. The old flounder reminds all the fish that they are pretty much dead and can never be freed. The next morning, the restaurant worker moved the fish into bowls and washed their tanks. The mackerel asks why the old flounder boss was not moved into the basin like everyone else. Spotty explains that the restaurant workers have forgotten the existence of the boss because he hides in his hideout all the time. Suddenly, the mackerel realizes that now is the perfect time to escape. They are no longer trapped within the invisible wall. So, she jumps out of the basin to make her way toward the sea. Spotty follows soon. A car pulls up to the restaurant. The restaurant worker explains that the restaurant is currently closed. The hungry lady stomps on the tails of Spotty with her heels. The restaurant owner now realizes that two of his fish are trying to get away. The mackerel is very close to the edge of the pier, but Spotty is struck under the heel of the visitors. The mackerel decides not to leave her friend. Both of them were caught and returned to the aquarium. In the evening, the restaurant worker releases a half-dead fish into the aquarium. Spotty asks Mackerel to eat with him. However, the boss-proud Mackerel refuses to eat after him. The half-dead fish was dragged into the lair of the boss. The half-dead fish says that it will die soon because its gills are damaged. Yet, it mocks the boss by calling him the same dead man because the boss has to hide in the lair all his life, like a living prisoner. The boss kills the half-dead fish but does not eat him. The mackerel felt disgusted with the boss. Then, she put the money where her mouth is. 
she jumps into the aquarium with the crabs. Then the mackerel tries to negotiate with the crabs to break the walls of the aquarium. But no crabs are listening and they only hurt the mackerel. At this time, a curious boy fishes the mackerel out of the crab tank and takes her to the clownfish tank. Once the mackerel gain consciousness, it eats all the clownfish with a huge appetite. The rest of the fish in the aquarium think that the mackerel is dead. But Spotty wants to see her. So, he plans to talk to the crabs himself. But, the boss slaps Spotty with his tail and orders every fish to forget everything the mackerel told them. But, Spotty got emotional. So he jumps out of the aquarium and goes to the crabs. Meanwhile, the mackerel continues to wallow in the small aquarium. It tries to eat the last clownfish. Because of this, a sword breaks off from the Statue of the Night which stands in the aquarium as an ornament and stabs into the body of the mackerel. Spotty tries to talk to the crabs, but they are extremely aggressive. Due to the injury, the mackerel loses consciousness. She dreams about talking to Spotty. Spotty asks if he can go to sea. The mackerel says all fish actually come from the sea. They just forgot about it. The mackerel says they can escape and live together at sea. In reality, Spotty is hurting badly. His unconscious body is brought back to the original aquarium. The eel is looking toward eating Spotty. However, the boss is not pleased. So he took the Spotty body away. His actions irritate the rest of the fish. They demand to eat the rest of Spotty. The restaurant worker finally notices that the mackerel is not in her tank and returns her to her place. When the mackerel sees an injured and motionless Spotty, she assumes that the boss killed him. The mackerel starts running after the boss around the aquarium. At this time, the restaurant waitress received an order for a flounder dish. So he catches the boss and places him next to the cutting board. The boss sees how other fish are killed and cooked. How fish is minced and diced, and how people eat their brethren. All this terribly frightens the boss. Suddenly, he saw the body of Spotty thrown into the sink. It reminds him of the first moment when Spotty's tail was bitten off for the first time. Spotty was crying and the boss wanted to cheer him up. Spotty then asked why he tried desperately tried to survive. The boss has no answer because living in the aquarium is a pointless existence. This is the moment when the chef raised the knife over his head. Suddenly, the diners decide to change their order. Now they want to eat mackerel instead. The cook then put the boss back into the aquarium. The boss swims up to the mackerel. The mackerel now realized that the boss cared about his friends. The two bonds the boss and mackerel feel the unity of their souls. They no longer see their fears and break the barriers of true friendship. After that, the cook fishes out the mackerel. Finally, the mackerel promises to forever remember her friend and will remain in his heart. Then, the mackerel is cut up and served on the table. The customers who ordered the dish decided to mock still living mackerel by inserting a cigarette into its mouth. The next morning, a restaurant worker opens the lid of the aquarium. The flounder boss immediately breaks out of its shelter and jumps out of the aquarium. He knocks the worker to the ground and rushes toward the sea. Halfway through, the master starts to lose his strength. He finds it hard to move. Then, he hears the mackerel's voice tell him to move on. Let him know that there is not much left to do. The boss gets to the edge of the pier while the restaurant worker catches up to him. He picks up the boss and gives him a flick. Suddenly, the boss spits the fragment of the sword which pokes the mackerel's body. Because of his pain and surprise, the worker let go of the boss and threw him into the sea. Life goes on in the aquarium, but now the master is free.